I do know how to talk, though. Well, I guess we'll find out here in a minute now, won't we? <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to our YouTube channel here for TJ's Painting Company. Um, it's funny, my father, Tom, and I were just discussing, and uh, I was telling him how, you know, I do all the majority of the quoting for the company now, and, and quite a bit throughout the week I often get asked, because it says <clears throat> owner on my business card when I hand you my card at the time of the quote, and they say, oh, you're the owner? Where do you get TJ's from? Who's TJ? Well, this is TJ right here. <laughs> and I'd love to introduce you guys to my dad, TJ, the man, the myth, the legend, Thomas Joseph Brennan. Welcome, Thomas. Well, thank you very much. Glad to have you here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just wanted to give you guys a little, little bit better understanding as to how this company started. Um, it was it was started quite a while ago. As you know, we've been in business here in the lovely town of Mount Laurel. Um, he started this business back in 1999. Um, so why don't you give them, you know, let, let's start with this. Let's start with where are you where are you from originally? Levittown, Pennsylvania. Levittown, Pennsylvania. And uh, you, you have some, some brothers and sisters. Oh, yeah. Whole family's over there. Right. Your, uh, two, two of your brothers, my Uncle Mike, my Uncle Jim, both of which um, both worked with, with us early on in the, in the business. But so you had, you had a brother, you had uh, Aunt Maureen, your sister, yep. your two brothers, Mike and Jim. You grew up in Levittown. You weren't always in the painting business. No. Right? So give them a little bit more of a uh, background on who you were before TJ's Painting started. Well, before TJ's Painting started, I was in the compressor parts business for uh, about 30 years with two different companies. Traveled around the country, first in uh, Denver, Colorado, moved to Salt Lake City where Michael was born. Uh, trying to figure out all the ups and downs of the industry um, and uh, working my way into a sales job. That was my goal. So I uh, wanted to learn as much about the business as I possibly could. And I, I did that, um, moved back here, and I got, got my dream job down in Corpus Christi, Texas, still in the compressor parts business for a very fine company. Um, my wife wanted to move back here to be around the family. Uh, so we moved back here in 1990 and I joined forces with another company also in the compressor parts business. So I was with with them for 13 years. And uh, after, you've, after you've been doing something for 31 years, um, it gets a little stale and thinking of something else that I could do. And um, I decided to start a handyman business that I could do on nights and weekends. Um, so I started doing that and it was turning out pretty good. I was pretty pretty busy on a lot of weekends and making pretty good uh, pretty good cash. Then um, where did you uh, how did people start to hear about you? How did people know that you were doing handyman stuff? Was it just well people in the neighborhood to start or was No, there used to be a newspaper called the Courier Post. I think they're still around. Yeah. And People they, still read the paper? Um, they do. Oh. Um, I thought they were all but just But they had a TikTok. section in there where you could advertise for your services. Uh, in fact, I think in theirs, it was Dial a Professional. So I got listed under there under Handyman. Right. And um, my phone would ring. I had a separate uh, telephone for my Handyman business. So... Um, um, do you have a That's pager how too? I, no, I just had cell phones. <laughs> they Pagers had cell phones that. back then? They, uh, that was right around the time they probably just came out with them. Well, I, I had a pager in the 80s. Yeah. And in the, in the 90s, a new company I joined in 90, 1990, we had cell phones in our vehicles. So I I've had a cell that. phone ever since then. Yeah. So, uh, but how did people get to know that I was doing something? I advertised in the paper. Nice. That's uh, I don't. They don't have that section in there anymore. There's no section, no no classified section. 
So, um, so anyhow, that's how it started. And then uh, I think you started helping me on a couple jobs here and there. Uh, and then it was like, I had to come up with an idea to where, what, what would keep us the most busy? Because the handyman just couldn't cut it all the time. There was a lot of days off here and there. Yeah. So I came up with the idea of painting. Because a lot of people ask if we do painting, and it's like, yeah. And I was like, kind of. Why don't we make that the <laughs> uh, focus of the job instead of get rid of the handyman? Or actually, I didn't keep it. It was TJ's painting and handyman. Yeah. Which I thought would work well together. And, and they did. Yeah. Because we started out with you and my brother Mike, your uncle. And um, I was able to get jobs, keep you guys busy doing the painting. And I could be doing maybe some crown molding or hanging doors or hanging ceiling fans or anything that came up so that the customer could basically do one stop shopping if they were looking for that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So. 1999 is when you uh, got the idea to do it. Yeah. Officially, though, it officially became an LLC in 05. In 05. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, shortly thereafter, I think I was working with you full time, and we brought on Uncle Mike. Yep. Uncle Mike was working with us for a while. Uncle Mike didn't have any experience in the painting business. He, yeah, he, he did. He had worked a, a, for a painter before that. Minimal. Minimal. He didn't level. have any experience painting residential homes. No. No. Right? Um, so, it was great. We got to work with my Uncle Mike in the field for years. We then brought on uh, my Uncle Jim, yep. my dad's other brother. Uh, Jim worked with us for years. My brother, my brother Tommy, at times <clears throat> worked with us in the field. Although Tommy is not a uh, uh, blue-collar-minded individual, <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, you know, he's an office guy. He's a, he's a people guy. But um, Tommy worked with us in the field at times, and things things were going pretty darn good for us. You know, for not really having much experience and still learning as we're going, we didn't have access to resources back then like we do now. You couldn't open up YouTube and how to do this and how to do that. And, you know, so we were just like, I know we were buying books and we were just learning on the fly and learning as much as we could. And, 2000 and 2008, as he calls it, the great recession the great recession hit the great recession hit and you know we were accustomed to working five six days a week there was always work always months of, of, of a backlog for us there was there was never any uh, you know like uncertainty for, no, the, we, for the we most were, part we were booked out you know months at a time yeah we had that one client that was flipping houses that we were their painter right and um um, that changed because they hired their own painter. Yeah. And then the Great Recession hit about six months after that. Great Recession hit. Yeah. So, unfortunately, it, it came at a time where Michelle and I had just moved into, we just moved out of here. This is my parents' house here in Mount Laurel. Uh, we had just moved out of here into our first apartment. So, we literally just moved in. We have this this... At the time, we thought massive rent, all this responsibility, and now we're experiencing something we've never dealt with before, and it was uh, it, it was pretty difficult. I remember uh, Grandma Methel; she uh, she she had to pay our rent a couple times just just for us to get by. So um, I actually now I've, I've had this conversation with so many people, especially people that have been in business for a long time that experienced it, and going through something like that as painful as it is i look back on it now and i'm so grateful that it happened because it it, it teaches you a lot about um how important it is and and how much you really should appreciate the work when you have it because it's not always there and it can go away very quickly and it did 
Um, so we, we, we had to navigate through that. Unfortunately, we had to let go of Uncle Mike and Uncle Jim at the time. Um, I ended up, I had a lot of free time on my hands and went into uh, researching how to design and build a website for us. I found a site called vistaprint.com that was very easy to use. It was like 25, 35 bucks a month. Put together a quick website. Prior to that, we didn't have one. Um, so I used my time wisely and I found some forums online where I was able to speak with other business owners who have been doing this for a while. So I was learning in that, in that downtime, which definitely helped us. Um, so we got out of the great recession, what, late 2009? I was going to say 2010, 10 or 12. Yeah. 10, I think 2010. Yeah. And, um, it, it took probably a good couple of years for business to really come back. And we got one big job that kicked us off that, uh, the house in Moorestown. It was full of wallpaper. Oh, well, it was lovely. And but uh, we were on that job for two weeks. Yeah. Uh, and for those of you guys that remove wallpaper, you know how much fun it can be. And this was one of those. This was a large home. Almost every room in the house had wallpaper. So, you know, one of the things that that we always like to do is just go in and like test each room a little bit. And, you know, of course, it's one of those houses you go in in the first room, it just comes off in sheets. Right. And we'd done it so long. You never, ever, ever start clapping and, and high-fiving because you know that next room could be an absolute nightmare. And it was. There was two or three rooms humping and grunting. And <laughs> 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 but, you know, that's... That's the part of the business that uh, it, it's not for everybody. You have some really good jobs and you have some really bad jobs. And, you, you know, you, you learn a lot about who you are on those bad jobs. Um, you know, one one in particular that comes to mind, is, what was her name? Patricia? Christopherson. Christopherson. Pat, if you ever see this, uh, no, don't take offense to it in any way. But Patricia was another one who was flipping houses. And... She she would, uh, Tommy Brennan IV. Tommy Brennan's calling. How do you turn this thing off? There you go. She would call us, and uh, she would buy a lot, a lot of these houses down in Sicklerville that needed a ton of work. I mean, they were just top to bottom, just a lot of prep work, and 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 not in the best environments either. So, but you know, work is work, and you got to keep your customers happy, right? That's right. So we. Uh, he was he was doing the quotes. I remember walking into one particular shop. <laughs> I think he thought it was a popcorn ceiling, right? And we're just yeah, we're, we're moving the popcorn. I'm like that that's not popcorn. That's like stucco. Well, I don't care what it is. It's coming down. <laughs> well, what's your plan, pal? Because that's like concrete up there. <laughs> there was no heat in the house, right? And it was in the middle of winter. Yeah. There was no heat in the house. So no hot water. There's no hot water. What did you do? I bought a heater, I think. Didn't you buy like a little stove and you were heating water up in the garage? Yeah. So that we could spray the ceiling. Right. Because we needed hot water to do that. I think I told him I was going to quit numerous times you on You did that the job. first day on the job. You said, let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah. I said, Dad, I'm going to call Pat myself. This this job, we, we just can't do. Nope. We're doing it. Okay. Whatever. Um, well, look, if we didn't do it. There was nothing else to do at that right. time. Right. So Either that or you go home and sit on the couch. That's it. <clears throat> that's it. Well, looking back in retrospect on that particular job, I wish I would have sat on the couch. Me too. <laughs> um, you know, you learn by your mistakes, but we had the job. We had a deposit on the job. And it's like, we'll figure it out. We figure everything else out. Yeah. There was really only one difficult ceiling in there, and that was in the kitchen. That was like the stucco finish, but the other, the other rooms was mostly popcorn. So it's just the one you say so. area in the kitchen that was like the, maybe the dining room too. But yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot of work removing popcorn. I don't know what I hate more, popcorn or. Well, it's wallpaper. actually not these days. They have these machines where they go up and basically do the work for you. Okay. Um, but w 
needless to say, we, we don't remove popcorn. I can refer you to somebody who does that. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're not in that business anymore. Right. So we, uh, we, we started picking up again. We brought Uncle Mike back on. Right. Yep. And, uh, Uncle Mike, I love him to death, started experiencing some, uh, some vision issues and, you know, being in the painting business, you, you need your eyesight first and foremost. Um, so Mike went to, uh, I think he went to his, his regular eye doctor and they told him that he would need to get a, a CAT scan or whatever you need. He had something putting pressure on his optic nerve, which they thought was a tumor. Um, it, it turned out to be a non-cancerous tumor, um, a pituitary adenoma. So the, I think when he went in there, he had, he had, he could see blurry. He had maybe 30% vision in one eye and the other eye was decent. The other eye was pretty good. So the plan was to go to uh, Will's eye in Philadelphia. He would get this procedure done and he would come out and he would have his vision restored. Well, I think a couple things happened during the procedure. They ended up nicking his optic nerve. He flatlined. They brought him back. He came mm -hmm. out of the surgery 100% uh, blind. 100% blind and has been to this day. And that was... Uh, that was tough, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was tough. But I'll tell you what. I remember in the beginning, Mike was just, he, he was, you know, he was trying to be tough about it and trying to be, uh, you know, as strong as he could. But I mean, I, I, you just can't imagine that pain and that uncertainty. Um, he's, he's handled it as well as any party I've I mean, ever it's seen. just unbelievable because Mike, before that, if you, if you're watching this and, and Mike ever worked in your house, everybody loved Mike. Mike was always in a good mood. He was always happy. He was a fun guy for the most part. Um, he just great, great energy, just loving, loving guy. And, uh, and he loved painting. He really, he really genuinely loved, he loved painting. Yep. Yeah. Um, so he was he was heartbroken, and uh, you know so so were we. Um, but you know those those are the breaks. That's life. Sometimes it it, it throws you a curveball. But like like my dad said, he's handled it. Um, you know you could we could call Uncle Mike right now. Hey hey how you doing? What are you up to? You know just happy as could be. You would never you would never know. Yeah. So um, you know around that time uh, mm. we were jamming. We were very, very busy, and now it's back to just me and my dad. Couldn't call Jim. Jim got a job. Jim couldn't help us. Tommy was working. So I'm like, shit, man, what am I going to do? Because, you know, I basically ran circles around him. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I can't, I can't, hand, my back can't handle all this. <laughs> so I put, uh, I put an ad on, uh, on Craigslist, and uh, I had never hired somebody in my life. So this was all this was all new territory to me. I mean, you can you can talk to business owners in forums, you can read books, you can watch videos. If, if you've never hired someone before, you just have to do it, and and you learn as you go. There's there's really no like uh, blueprint to it. You, you know, you just you, you you have to use your best judgment. Um, you know, what what type of person are you looking for? You know what are you looking for obviously you want people that are that are talented but you know as i look back in 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 over the years it's and for you guys that are uh aspiring business owners and looking to grow your company you, you should hire people first not just experience you should hire good people and over the years we've had a lot of good people um we've had a lot of guys come through TJ's painting who now have their own companies and they're, they're doing very well. Mm -hmm. Um, at times they, they subcontract for us and, uh, you know, I don't want to get into all the particulars of who came and who went and this, that, and the other, but that's, that's a, a brief synopsis of, um, of how our company began, why it began, 
Um, and I, I wanted you guys to hear hear the uh, the story direct direct from the man here, TJ, because you're always hearing me on on camera here. Um, and you know the 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 purpose of this YouTube channel um, for me is is to inspire you guys, educate you guys, help you out as much as I can. I would my main goal is to try to elevate our industry as much as I possibly can because um, there's there's just too many guys in in the trades that just have such low standards. And all it does is bring the whole industry down as a whole. So anything that I've learned that I feel like is helpful, that, that would help our industry and everybody grow is, is my main goal. Um, and I, I think it should be everybody's goal um, because if not, it's just, it's selfish and, it, and it's, it's not helpful to the industry. So um, with that being said, I'm gonna be posting probably a video or two a week. And like I said, they're either gonna be inspiring videos, they're gonna be um, videos based on our, our processes, procedures, anything that I think will, will provide value to, to painters, to business owners, or just, just people in general. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna share as much as I can with you guys. Anything you would like to, uh, you would like to close with here, TJ, and leave these people with on this beautiful Sunday? Well, what have I always said? Uh, um, do what you say you're going to do. Show up on time. Be a man of your word. Be a man of your word. Show up on time. Do a good job. Every house is like it's your own house. And uh, treat people right. And what's what's the uh, what's the tagline? When quality, quality and, and neatness, neatness count. count. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you soon.